The president of the Philippines has declared a national calamity with up to two million people affected by the devastating super typhoon. The scale of the recovery effort has been described as monumental with rescuers struggling to get aid to areas most in need. More than half a million are still without food, water or medicine. The Philippines have been hit by many, many storms, but nothing quite like this. The sheer ferocity of the winds and the enormous tidal surge caused by the typhoon destroyed almost everything in its path. Toloso is wrecked. Many of those who died lie where they were found. It's the same in many communities, virtually swept away as the storm crossed the country. Just a few more moments and we all would have been saved, but I accidentally let go of my daughter's hand. I guess she had to be sacrificed, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to escape. She must have known if I kept carrying her, both of us would have drowned. Stranded survivors appeal for help to passing planes. Some have brought food, water and medical supplies, but it isn't enough, not nearly enough. In wrecked buildings, survivors scavenge for food. If we see people getting food, we just let them be. However, if they're looting other things, such as appliances, we apprehend them. As time goes on, these tiny groups sheltering in the few buildings still standing say their supplies are almost out. We are declaring a state of national calamity to accelerate the efforts of government to save, to render aid and to rehabilitate the provinces that were ravaged by the storm. This is important so that we can ensure control over the price of the basic commodities and services that our countrymen will need to avoid overpricing and hoarding of vital products. As some aid flights heavily laden with supplies do get into the disaster zone, there is a sense that the relief effort is racing against time and the elements. They need to get people to safety in large numbers. The people of the Philippines live with storms, over 20 a year on average. But this was worse because the water and winds combined. We survived the winds, one man said, but we couldn't survive the water. Stuart Ramsey, Sky News, the Philippines. And there are grave fears for two Queensland families missing in the Philippines. Errol and Margie Mitchell and Chris and Marisol Hesselberg were staying together on the outskirts of Tacloban, the city which has been hardest hit by the typhoon. Mr Hesselberg's father last heard from his 44-year-old son on Thursday and is fearing the worst. The Department of Foreign Affairs has so far confirmed one Australian casualty, Sydney man and former priest Kevin Lee.